In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Don Elder and his six-year-old granddaughter Sarah were members, or are members, of Salem Lutheran Church in Buffalo, New York. And they were enjoying cider and donuts last Sunday on Reformation Sunday when Elder remarked, you know, Sarah, I hope you can join us next Sunday for a special day. And she says, why is it so special, Grandpa? Well, because it's going to be All Saints Sunday, he replied. But Grandpa, she said, we're not saints, we're Lutherans. Brothers and sisters in Christ our Lord, what should we Lutherans celebrate on All Saints Day, All Saints Sunday? In earlier days, the church emphasized the bold witness of the martyrs, those who gave their lives because they were followers of Jesus Christ and refused to recant their faith. Today, the church tries to emphasize all saints, those who celebrate life eternal with God in heaven, and also those followers of Jesus Christ living on earth. So what do we do with All Saints Sunday? Surely it's a day to remember with gratitude the lives of those who have gone before us in the faith as we did at the beginning of our worship service. Surely it's a day to share the loss of those whose loved ones have passed away. But All Saints Day is much more than that. It's a day to acknowledge two things. First, that we all share in the condemnation of God's holy law. Therefore, we die. And second, we all share in the good news. We are ransomed and redeemed by Christ, by his willingness to go to the cross for each and every one of us. We are the precious possession of God by the blood of Jesus, therefore we live. All Christians are living saints. There's a double reason to celebrate the goodness of God today. With those who have lost loved ones to death, we rejoice in this, that parents and children, husbands and wives, friends and neighbors, famous and unknown, all who died, having faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, are indeed living saints in heaven. And we remember them with thanksgiving. They already have what the prophet Isaiah prophesies, which is our text for today. The ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sign shall flee away. But we also rejoice in this, brothers and sisters, that sainthood is not just limited to those believers who have died and gone to be with the Lord. Strange as it may sound at times, you and I, believers in Jesus, are saints right here, right now. We are living saints. In the New Testament, the word saint is one of the most frequent ways of referring to Christians still living on earth. The Apostle Paul addressed several New Testament letters to God's people in a given place, Ephesus, for example. He wrote this to the people in Ephesus, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Jesus Christ. And to the people at Philippi, the Christians there, Paul wrote these words, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi. How could Paul do that, you may ask? Well, as surely as Paul knew that a saint means a holy one, a holy person, he also knew all about unholiness, and he knew about sin in himself and in fellow Christians. To be called a saint doesn't mean that we're perfect, that we're always loving and giving, that we never get mad, we never get jealous, we never covet, we never take God's name in vain. We know that that's not true of ourselves, of anyone else here, 
or of even the best Christians we may know. We're all sinners condemned under the wrath of God's law, which we cannot even begin to keep. That's why we die. Paul knew this fact of our human condition to be true of everyone who, to whom he wrote that they were sinners headed for the grave. He knew that about himself. He knew that about me. He knew that about you. We all stand as sinners before a perfect, almighty God. But Paul knew something else about sainthood. He understood that the basis for sainthood is not the ability to pray all day or to be a super volunteer at church or in the community or to be a faithful worshiper all the years of our lives. The only basis for sainthood is is for being a forgiven, saved child of God based upon the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, on the cross of Calvary. We're saints, not because we're sinless, but because our sin has been taken away by God's grace in Jesus Christ. From our baptism, that's why the baptismal font is there, from our baptism, whether as a baby or as an adult, until our death, we are saints in the eyes of God. And after our death, we continue to be saints, though in a far more righteous and glorious surrounding, as St. John writes in today's first lesson from Revelation chapter 7. Apply this stunning description of heaven to our current life. No more shaky finances. No more slanderous political campaigns or those awful, awful political commercials that are filling our TVs and radios. No more worry about our health or our anger. No more death. Those who depart in faith have all of this. It is the gift of Jesus Christ who came down from heaven, who allowed himself to be born to the Virgin Mary, who lived a perfect life for you and for me, who sacrificed himself upon the cross of Calvary for our sins, for all time, for all people. Thank God for this wonderful gift of sainthood. He has made it a reality for all believers in Jesus the Savior. Being a saint of God means that you are precious to him. You are bought with a price. You are the apple of God's eye. You are, in Isaiah's words this morning, the ransom and redeemed of the Lord. You have been put by God on the way of holiness that Isaiah prophesies, fleeing temptation, worshiping in God's house, running from the darkness of sin, fleeing to the light of God's holy word. You are living saints, after all. And if you are a living saint, then so are your fellow Christians. A person who trusts in Christ is also a saint of God, cleansed by the lifeblood of the Son of God himself, redeemed and ransomed by his cross. Think of all those Christians around you, you that that God has made a saint. Think about that. Wives, your husband is a saint. Husbands! Your wife is a saint. Your children are saints. Classmates are saints. Your colleagues at work are saints who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. All of these people, redeemed by God, brought to faith in baptism, made into living saints. Praise God for the gift of his Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, reminding each and every one of us that we are saints, the holy ones of God, living saints now and forever. Alleluia and amen. Today is also Persecuted Christian Sunday, and I would like to show you a video I hear a lot of us complaining about, well, the church isn't what it used to be. It doesn't have the authority it used to have, you know, that we're looked down upon. Any of us have no idea what our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ go through because they are Christians. I'm going to ask you all to start the, uh, the video. 
our good AV people. Thank you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Kadus, 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 or Balfad, Zamina Sman Kehal Kamalit, the Shukada Kates Piermaka Kiliki to Neman Zamina Bakhdija, the Shukada Kate Akada Subakeli Akadanda, Kutuna Mizanina Baksha, the name Subadi Saki Akadanda, and the Shukada Kate and Bachokeli Akadanda. Pakistan, we Christians are second-class citizens. Though we have committed no crime, we are ostracized and banished to the lowest place in society. forced to leave our villages and our own homes. We cannot get good jobs. And we have no voice in government. left for us is servitude. Sewage work. And we know we will never advance. church, a place where Christians come together to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, to sing his praise, to study his word. For while our country has turned its back on us, God has not. Sometimes it is not easy. The loss, the injustice. So please remember to pray for us. That we will continue to live together in fellowship. That we will continue to see the joy of the Lord in our lives that we will persevere in our faith no matter the cost. And please remember, we are praying for you.
May we be challenged to keep our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ in our prayers frequently and be prepared to support them in any way possible.